welcome to the Center for Integrative Nutrition's Teaching Kitchen. My name is Joya Pursuti, and I'm a research assistant here for the Department of Preventive and Behavioral Medicine. One of the classes I teach is a special cooking class for those with gastrointestinal issues, such as IBD, which also includes Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Today, I have a wonderful guest participating in my teaching kitchen with me, and we're going to make some special pizza and what's special is they're not cooked with traditional flours. They're in fact cooked with almond flour, which is a nut flour obviously, because on this diet we have a grain-free, starch-free, sugar-free, and lactose-free uh, staple here. So we use the almond flour to substitute for the traditional flours. And hopefully you'll have some fun. Well, the next step now is to make our thin crust pizza. Okay. And again, we're going to use almond flour as the dough Great. and we're going to make this delicious sauce from scratch and that will be the tomato sauce that covers the pizza. Okay. And so what I'm going to have you do is cut your onion Great. and chop that off. Once that's chopped, we're going to saute it with garlic for a few minutes and then add these tomatoes that I've been going to finish chopping now. This recipe calls for 12 plum tomatoes and you want to make sure that you core and de-seed them as best you can. I gotta say, that seems like a lot of work, Joya. Can I just buy, you know, like a can, canned diced tomatoes or stewed tomatoes or something like that and put them in there? Is there... You can. You want to be really careful. You want to be label savvy. The reason why we're making our own sauce here is because a lot of uh, canned goods have preservatives, high mm -hmm. sodium content, and sugar, which we want to avoid on this diet. That's why we're making it fresh, and it also tastes better fresh. But you can, if you find a jar of tomatoes, use that as well. Make sure there's no extra additives in it, like sugar, and maybe you can rinse them because you also want to be careful of the sodium content. Can you add meat to this sauce, just like regular spaghetti Absolutely. or tomato sauce? Absolutely. Okay. And also to expedite this process, what I'm doing. This original recipe calls to remove the peels from this tomato because again, I had mentioned earlier when we were cooking the pear crisp that intact fiber can be somewhat of a problem. Peel can be sometimes a digestive, a digestive issue for some. Uh -huh. But what I'm going to do instead of cooking these down for 45 minutes after I dice them, I'm going to put them in the food processor and now I'll break it down. And then after the food processor, we'll throw oh. them in and boil them with the herbs and spices. Okay, so it's not some kind of property or what's it, the ingredient in the skin. It's just this, the rough, the rough roughage in the skin that can be the Correct. problem. Okay. Correct. And the seeds. Sometimes seeds can be very difficult if people okay. have strictures or diverticulitis. Seems like this diet takes an awful lot of work. Is there an easier way or are there shortcuts? It just seems like there's a lot of home prep and. There is. Time. You're right. It is. It can. It is an adjustment. It, okay. it certainly is a lot of work and prep, but you'll get used to it, and and you start to enjoy it. And you'll also be able to speed up the process once you get a better understanding of the ingredients and once you're used to to cooking. But you could also, you know, although people have time is always an issue for some, you could always prep larger batches on the weekend, and menu oh. planning is really important. Too. Sure. So okay. that way you're always prepared with something. So I could make two batches of this sauce and use one for this week and then one for the next week. Are there sample menus online or where that's, could I find? That's a great question. We are currently in the process of making one and we will have those available shortly online when we revamp our new website. Oh, So that will be a great resource for individuals. We have a number of recipes on this diet that we do offer. So that's also a plus. But a little creativity and a little planning can go a long way with this diet. And you're eating very healthy because we encourage eating fresh fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, meats, hmm. chicken, uh, fish, fresh fruits and veggies as I mentioned, nuts, aged cheeses, because the lactose has been eaten up after it's fermented for so long. So aged cheeses are permitted on the diet. That's why you could have Greek yogurt. Really? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, because that's something I can just get at the supermarket. Correct. Really? Yeah. Okay. You just want to get the plain one because a lot of them have that added sugar. sugars okay. and whatnot. And that's why we can use certain cheeses for this pizza that we're making. We're going to use cheddar cheese and oh, dry curd farmer's cheese, which is um, also allowed on the diet. What's farmer's cheese? What? What is farmers, that this? Yes, this is farmer's cheese. It's a sort of a softer but more firmer cottage cheese that's aged and also permissible on a diet. Okay. This I've never seen before. Is that special order too or? It's actually not. That okay. is available at your local grocery store next to the cottage cheese. Oh, yes. Okay. So that Great. I guess I've just never seen it there before. Great. Okay, should I be cutting something? I cut up the onion, you're cutting up the tomatoes. You're terrific. You did perfectly well. So what we're going to okay. do is take these tomatoes that we've diced. And can I help you with any of that? Sure, we're going to put them in the food processor, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, now after we have placed the tomatoes and basil in the food processor, the next step I'm going to do for the sauce is saute the onions and garlic for about three to four minutes until they're soft. Okay. And during that time I'd like you to make the crust for the pizza dough. Great. Okay, and so what you're going to do is put in a half a cup of dry curd farmer's cheese, some salt, and two eggs. Okay. And then roll it into a ball. what you can do is take a piece of parchment paper and a rolling pin and roll over it to spread okay. it out evenly. And you do want to make it as thin as possible because it will cook up. Okay. This looks great. And I'll help you in one moment, but now that my onions and garlic have been sautéing for the past three or four minutes, I'm going to add the tomatoes and basil. basil in here and 12 plum tomatoes and this is two tablespoons of freshly cut parsley. And what I'm also going to do is add one cup of water and bring this to a boil and at that point let it simmer for a few minutes after it comes to the boil. 
And during that time, I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and pepper, about a teaspoon. How do you think this pizza crust looks? I think this looks terrific. This is excellent. Okay. Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the oven for approximately 20 minutes at 350 degrees. Okay. Okay? Our pizza is ready. I'm going to take it out of the oven. Great. Our pie crust is completed. And this is what it looks like. So you'll see it, you'll notice it's golden brown around the edges. Mm -hmm. So that's how almond flour cooks up and you'll know it's done. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sauce that we just finished baking and spread it on the pizza. And what I'll have you do is put the cheddar cheese and oregano on the top after okay. I'm done with this. And it's three quarter cup yeah, of cheddar, cheddar cheese, cheese and half a tablespoon of oregano. Yeah, about okay. half a tablespoon, half a teaspoon or a quarter teaspoon of oregano, whatever you prefer. Okay. You can have more or less cheese if you want. But one thing to know about this is this is a special treat. Although it's filled with good fats, it has a lot of good fat in it. So you don't want this to make, you don't want to make this a dietary staple all the time, but it is good um, sort of home cooked meal when you want a comfort food. Mm -hmm. okay. It seems like the proportion is different too, whereas pizzas are a lot of cheese and a lot of crust. This is a lot of crust, but mostly sauce right. is what it looks like we're going to put on, right? Right. We're making more of a thin crust pizza. And the sauce is going to be really the flavor. The fresh sauce with the fresh basil and the fresh herbs and spices. Go ahead and put the remainder of the cheese on. Okay. And now just add a little bit of oregano, sprinkle that on top. And that already smells great. Yeah, it smells delicious. And now we're gonna, now that this is done, we're gonna pop it right back in the oven for about five minutes just until the cheese has melted. to the finished cook time just in case it cooks up faster. As I said, different ovens have different finishing cook times depending upon what type of heat's used, gas or electric. Joy, I have one more question. Does almond flour, do almond flour um, products or does almond flour in general have a very strong almond flavor? Is it like eating a handful of nuts or? Actually, it's not, uh, especially when you add uh, spices or honey and whatnot, it's, it's very bland okay. and it tends to take on the flavor of whatever you Try use, it. whatever okay. spice or flavor you use. Good, I can't wait to try that. Smells delicious. So this is our finished pizza with almond flour, homemade tomato sauce, cheddar cheese, and oregano on top. Yeah delicious. So now we're just going to let it cool. And I'd like to just say my name is Joya Pursuti and I work here for the Department of Preventive and Behavioral Medicine for the Center of Integrative Nutrition. And I'm a research assistant and this is one of my IBD cooking classes and some of the recipes that we teach here. And for more information and recipes you can visit our website. And uh, thank you so much. make mention because there's no preservatives in what we're baking is that after you let it cool you want to refrigerate it and eat it within a couple of days. So like two two days, two, two three, three days? days. Okay. Yeah. All right. And mm -hmm. is there a I mean does it spoil the same way? Would I how would I know if it had been sort of well actually gone? it's interesting you'll notice the taste over a course of, of the week okay. decline. So you okay. won't be able to taste the spices as well. And you can also freeze it, no problem.